Okay. So here's your low A, people. Why don't you check that and make sure that's in tune. Lovely note, very nice and rich. Okay, here we go. Nice long bows, lots of time to tune. Ready, go. Arpeggio. Ready, go. Challenging key, especially in the low octave. How's everybody feeling after all that? Not too bad? Pretty good? Okay, let's do it again then. Right away, we're going to lock it in. I'm going to make my window a little bit bigger here. That's better. Okay, one more time. Here's your A. Ready, go! Arpeggio. Still good? Everybody's still good? Okay, that's good. One more go, this time faster. All right, try to rely on your hand. Your hand knows what to do, it just did it. So let's try it a little bit faster. It's gonna be kind of like this. Kind of like that, okay? Here's your eight.
Okay, we got to do it again. Because my C sharps were just deplorable. Just awful. Let's do it again. Here's your A. A one, two, three, go. C sharp, my C sharps were better that time, not perfect. Anybody proud of their C sharps? Who's proud of their C sharps in the key of A? Anybody? <laughs> right on, John. That's great. <laughs> Whoever put the frets on your guitar did a great job. That's awesome. <laughs> Let's try that arpeggio once more, because that's mostly what we're working with in this tune. Let's try one more arpeggio, same speed. Special attention to the C sharps. Ready, two, three, go. Okay, I'm proud of my C-sharps now. How's everybody else? Feeling proud of your C-sharps? Oh, good. Not too bad. Keep working on it. It's not a note that's easy, eh? Here it is in tune. is at a little bit out of tune. Not a lot of difference there. Eh? You really have to listen hard. Here it is in tune again. Tiny bit more brightness there than the flat. Tiny bit. That's all your ear can hold on to. So it is hard. Extra listening is required. Now. It's, it's very depressing if you put your tuner on and watch it while you're playing. <laughs> it can be very depressing, Bill. Uh, it's, you know, what I usually say about using the tuner is that it's good to have it glanceable, you know, because if you watch it the whole time, for some people, it's completely discouraging. They can't even do it. You know, if they play three, four notes, they put the thing away, you know, but if you have it glanceable, then you can make changes when you glance and you wouldn't believe what that does for your hand. It really does teach your hand to uh, make the changes ahead of time. Okay. But you're right, Bill. Try not to stare too directly at your tuner. <laughs> Good for your mental health. Okay, Dusky Meadow. Let's do it. We're going to go slow. It's going to bring it up on my screen here. There we go. That's her, Dusky Meadow. And it is challenging, this tune. There's no question about it. I've been playing it so long, it's no longer really a challenge for me, but I can see where the challenges are, that's for sure. It's mostly the key and the low strings, just, just getting around those low strings. So we're going to go dead slow, everybody. Very, very nice and easy. There's no reason to be in a hurry at all. And it's going to be like this. that so let's do it we're gonna do it a good three times so get that bow arm ready one two three Okay, 
Dusky Meadow, nice and slow, and uh, hopefully bang on in tune, and hopefully with no really serious problems. Yes, Anne, or Catherine, yes, Catherine. The um, last bar, the last bar, the second note, is that G supposed to be um, natural or sharp? I think it's supposed to be sharp. It should be, right, yeah. Was, okay. that, was I playing it natural? I don't know. I don't know. I think I was playing it sharp, but it should be sharp because the old rule is the accidental it go uh, applies to every G in the bar, right? So in that, right. in the, so the previous bar has one, but the but the last bar does not. Good question, though. That's the type of thing that can throw you when the when the notes are flying. Anybody else have any little issues? Anything at all? This is the time for help. That's better. Hey, Dan, yes. when we're grinding it out, let's just do the A part. The B part, not really a problem. Okay, good point. Yeah. Anybody else into that idea? Just grinding out the A part? Let's do it. Okay, great. Yes, Peter. You're into it. Okay. <laughs> Peter's on board. A part only. Let's do it. Okay, so let's let's do it th like this, though. Let's do it about, say, we'll do the this A part. We'll do it four times. The first two times, same speed as we've done it. Okay? And what I want you to do during this speed, because you've got to do this mindfully if you want to get somewhere, which means that when we're going slow, pay attention to how hard you press on that C sharp. So that when you go fast, you can just rely on that to get you up in tune. Just the feel of it. Because that's the other part of intonation for fiddle players, is the feel. And my hand does a lot of it on its own. Okay? So when we're going slow, be mindful of how hard you have to press for that C-sharp and how you keep your one from moving up the neck or whatever it is you have to do when we're slow, because that's what we're going to do fast. So two times slow, and then the next two times I'm going to pick up the pace each time okay and we'll see how we get along all right there people you know what i don't need the music the problem with having the music is that i can't see you guys all of you guys so i don't need it i think i know it by now okay same speed two times and then we speed it up just the a part one two three So that's good. So that's the slow. Everybody feeling good? You getting the feel of it? You're getting, you're getting to know how it feels? Okay, let's up it a little bit. So let's do it maybe kind of like this. Okay, and then the next time will be a bit faster. So brace yourself and here we go. One, two, three. Faster! 
did everybody feel about the faster? Not bad? Not bad. Okay, we'll go with not bad. Huh, Catherine, not good? <laughs> do you find it kind of hopeless to do fast there, Catherine? You know what? I have never heard that excuse yet. Oh, I, I, I'm going to lock that in the vault because that is really, really good. Your muscles have Alzheimer's. <laughs> I can do the same pattern 50 times and speed it up and it still comes out wrong. Oh, my God. Now, one thing you might think about, though, for people that are really having trouble, you if you miss the odd C-sharp, because I know the C-sharp is the biggest challenge there, right? And if you miss the odd one, it's no big deal. Like, there's going to be plenty of C-sharps there. You know what I mean? And, and it might help your hand if you didn't have to reach for that one note. Um, then it might help your hand a little bit to get through the rest of it. So it's okay to do that. And just in the hopes that you'll be able to pop the C-sharps in. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Because sometimes the thing is, what you got to watch out for with keys that you stretch for is that sometimes the hard notes ruin all the easy ones, you know? And that's what I often talk about. Like, for instance, you're playing in the key of G, and you got the second part of a tune. Or whatever, you know, there's a million tunes like it. And so you want, you're so paranoid about your high B being flat that you uh, the, the rest of it suffers. You know, you reach up for the B and then everything's sharp after that. Or or just because you're unsure of that one uh, nasty note, the easy ones that you've played for years and years, are they suffer, right? And you never want the majority of a tune to suffer because of a couple of hard notes. That's one thing that, that's a kind of an adage that I have stuck to for a long time. Like, trust your hand to do the stuff it knows and if you don't get those the odd C sharp, no big deal. But just try to get the easy stuff, you know. And then I bet you any money the C sharps will fall in. Okay, and that might be an idea for anybody that's having trouble. Dan. Yes. I find where I get messed up is with the string crossings, going from the G string up to the A, and then down to the D, and then G, and then. So what I started doing was I started uh, plucking instead oh, yeah. to get my left hand better um and then i guess the string crossings will come along but i find that's what messes me up the most you make a really good point point there janet now one thing i'm going to ask you there when you say the string crossings are you talking about your left hand or your right hand oh my right hand okay i have a really hard time like i'll go down from there and then up to a and then down to d and it just gets all muddled and my finger goes on one string and my bow goes on the other one Here's what I want you to concentrate on for anybody that's having trouble with this because it is one of the most common problems in the world. And that is the way that you were demonstrating it there, Janet, looked like this. And this is basically like tuning your fiddle with only your pegs. It's really, it's a big kind of movement. And this elbow here, this right elbow is a bully. It pushes the bow all over the place where you don't even want it to go. So you give a little bit of an elbow and the bow goes right over. See that? Took too far every time. You know? Watch me do it. See that? Yeah, I, just, I get messed up with the geography in my right hand. I guess I need to just do more like string crossing skills. Uh, I will give you this, uh, and this goes for anybody that wants this exercise. These are there's two exercises that I find to be the ticket for changing strings on the fiddle, and I'm talking about the fiddle, not the violin, because we're we're in a bigger hurry than those guys. You know, those guys have it easy compared to us. Like, they're, they, we have to be whipping her around. So this is what I've noticed is the best practice for doing that. First of all, down on the G. Now, the only thing is about these exercises that I'm about to show you is that it depends on an elbow that doesn't move, okay? If you do these exercises with your elbow, you're not going to do yourself any good. So a lot of people will use an isolation point, like a doorway, 
or anything really uh, to keep the elbow from doing this okay so when you have the door here I'm gonna I know this is orchestra rehearsal and it's just turned into a bit of a fiddle lesson but guitar players be patient for one sec now, check this out so I'll use this music stand as my doorway so I'm gonna bring this music stand over there we go so check this out so this imagine that this is the the door jam see that and I got my elbow in front of it so now when I go to change strings if I use my elbow it's gonna rub and I'm gonna know that it's my elbow doing it and not my wrist doing it it's yeah. very difficult to work on the right hand at all because you can't really see it when you're playing and when you do look down at it you have this angle so now I don't know whether that's my wrist or my arm they look very similar from that angle see that so Ooh. that's why the doorway isolating the elbow can make that happen you get the little corrective bump hey eh? you get the little bump or the rub and you know that you're using your elbow and as my dad used to say even a pit pony hits his head two or three times and he learns to duck <laughs> so it really works really works on the elbow so assuming your elbow is not moving around you do down on the G up on the A with no sound on the D see that no sound at all because if you do it with your arm you're gonna get a sound every time if you do it with your wrist you're not up on down on the G up on the A no sound on the D down on the D up on the E see that no sound on the A string and then you turn it around to go up down up down up down up down see that so that's yeah. the first thing you do and that's kind of to get when I'm playing on check this out when I'm on the E string and the A string this is what my hand looks like see that everybody when I'm on the G string and the D string this is what my hand looks like see that you really don't need to use your elbow as much as you think you do you don't need to use it barely at all and in the old Royal Conservatory method they used to say that you could you're allowed to use your elbow up to a half inch <laughs> and, but they said that it always follows your hand so your hand goes over to the G string and your elbow can come up to follow a tiny bit see that and then you work your way back to the high side what they call the high side of the fiddle and once you get over there your elbow can follow to make it a little more comfortable see that but that's it that's the maximum movement from the elbow that's necessary and that's not even necessary for my, most of what we do the other exercise I can't stress enough is this again with your elbow up against something Abba. Mama Mia. See that? now again this exercise is no good if you're doing it like this see that see it's a big move you can't control too much so you need the elbow isolation is good and you just make and when you're doing it if you find it easy try to get as much bow in as you can on each string watch just using your hand see I'm using about that much bow it's really good I wish I could use a little more but that's really good to shoot for using that much bow without even moving my arm exercise remember that the E is straight up and down with the bow whereas the A is out so it's a little different than the other groups of strings so on the A you're spreading and you're scooping spread scoop spread scoop exercises I find the most useful for learning how to change strings quicker easier and smoother all right so, no yeah, I'll work on that. <laughs> good it'll it won't take long well this exercise does not take a long time to train your elbow 
Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks. No problem. Anybody else have any bits like that they'd like to talk about? Because that was extremely useful. Everybody was doing that exercise, and that's really good. I don't have anything on that, but before we leave this, can you just clarify, by the time I found that G-sharp that you were talking about in the second part, yeah. uh, I, I didn't catch what you were talking about it. <laughs> okay, let me just see what we got here. Let me just get it up. Where did it go? Where because there's something a bit peculiar. In the third bar... The lower G has a natural against it, but you haven't played it in sharp in that bar anyway. Uh, okay, let me see here. I gotta find it. It left my screen. Of course, dusky. Okay. So the G sharp. So uh, somebody was asking about the G that's in the very last bar of the tune. Uh, and that it's just a little sixteenth note G, and oh, that's yeah, right, right. that is a G sharp. Okay. Uh, okay, because the measure before has the accidental, which is the G natural. But the rule with accidentals is that they only go for, they go for all the G's in the bar, but not the next bar. You'd have to have a new accidental. Right, for that. yes. Yeah. But you're, there, there, it hasn't got a sharp here, but we need a sharp, right? Yeah, it helps to put a sharp in. Like there's a sharp, oh, there should be a sharp, yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you mean. Yeah. yeah. That's missing, because I, I thought this was written out in A, but whoever did it was an idiot. <laughs> Wrote it out okay. in D and put in G sharp, so that would, yes, well, you're right, that would need a I'll G I'll put sharp. an accidental in there. That's, that's good. Okay. That's, that's good. good. Thank you. Are no we problem. talking now about the last, the, the G in the second last bar? No, nope, the G in the last bar. It should have a sharp okay. sign on it. Yeah. Yeah. Dan, I was, I was going to say, my understanding is, like you said, that the accidental only applies in the bar it's in. That's so right. It's optional for them to put, say the, the, the second bar of that line, they put a, a G natural, which they didn't have to do, but they can do that if they want to, yeah. just to alert you that the G sharp doesn't keep going, right? That's right, and I'm always a fan of that. And it's very common in fiddle music that they'll notate that, like to remind you that the accidental is over. You know what I mean? And that you're back to normal or the other way around. So, yeah, so you're right, Bill. That's what they did there. It was a little reminder. Okay. All right. Any other issues or bits or pieces that you want to talk about? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Just um, to clarify confusion here. Yes. In the second last bar, the accidental is on the lower G. Yeah. And then we go up to the high G, but that's also natural it would also be natural very good elaine okay. it would also be and when you hear it see that and it's nice because you hear the g natural and then the g sharp right away it's kind of a neat thing but that was a good question too <laughs> can you play that again please dan sure <coughs> excuse me Oh, wow, sorry about that. See how that works? Thank you. You know, it would also probably work with a G natural, but I really like that G sharp in there. All right, very good questions and comments. Very, very good. Anybody else have anything before we try it three times, getting faster every time until I, until I see somebody throw the fiddle out the window? Okay, let's do it. The whole tune. Let's just do the whole tune. I know the A part's the hard part, but, you know, if we do the whole part the tune, then you'll get a, a break every second time. All right, here we go. So we'll start off like this. Just to give everybody time to work on those things, string crossing and the muscle memory with Alzheimer's and all that kind of stuff, okay? One, two, three.
right. That was a good clip there the last time, and it was a nice feel. I was enjoying it. Now, it wasn't quite as fast as the Strass Bay usually is. Yeah, I would put it down to kind of a fast march tempo, but still pretty good. Definitely progress. How's everybody feeling now with all those things we talked about? Did you get any better? Janet, I didn't see your elbow moving around near as much that time. And it's good because it's kind of like it's at the edge of the shot there. So if it did pop up, I would have saw it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I get, no, I did feel better, actually. Yeah. That's good. The other yeah. thing about that is that it's a lot less work. Like, you can get through a tune quicker and easier because you're not moving around that big meat, right. you know? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay, anybody having any problems with that, or could we try the whole set? Let's try the whole set. Father Eugene's Welcome to Cape North. It's been a while since we played it, so I thought it'd be good to practice it. And I know I'm completely dreaming if I think we're going to get in all the stuff I said we would practice tonight, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, Father Eugene's welcome. We'll do the whole set and see how we go. We're just doing the march once, I think, okay? Okay, good. Okay, here we go. I'm going to wing it with the tempos. We'll see how it all pans out. One, two, three. Uh, oh, sorry. I'm going to have to get the music up. I started playing a different tune there right away. <laughs> a really good tune. I've been thinking about this tune lately. Um, it's called Johnny Cope. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it, but it's a wicked old... It's, it's, it's a, I think it's a Scottish tune, but the Irish, you know, as usual, stole it. And uh, and it's a song. It's a, by Planksty. It's a wicked. They do a great job of the song, uh, and it's all about taking the English by surprise while they're sleeping in the middle of the I night. Don't, I don't play it. <laughs> you <laughs> you don't play it, and I understand. I totally understand. <laughs> you know, by all reports about that tune, though, it was very personal towards the guy. You know, Johnny Cope. Like they really didn't like that guy. You know what I mean? Uh, but the Irish do a version, and it's beautiful. I love it, you know. But the Cape Bretoners do a version, and it's in the key of B-flat, and it's very wacky sounding. And there was a fiddler called Little Mary McDonald. She recorded it way, way back. It, everybody kind of goes to that as the as the the uh, the version. But anyway, so now I got the music, so I won't confuse you and play a different tune. Okay, here we go. One, two, three.
Again.
Hey, there's Barb. Okay, how's everybody feeling about the Father Eugene set? It's been a while, I realize. Coming back? Oh, that's a good thing. All right. Anybody got any problems or questions or comments about that set? We'll practice it again. <laughs> no? Okay, great. Well, let's move on. Now, before we move on, I just got to run upstairs and make sure my boy is off the computer. He said he would be, but I just got to just make sure. And we're going to do the next one we're going to do. What did I say there? <clears throat> Okay, so we're going to do Father Eugene. I think you mentioned Stella. Let's do Stella. Another one that's been a while uh, since we did it. So let's do Stella. The Stella set. There we go. Stella set. Okay, you guys get that up and I'll be right back. himself. Isn't that great? Okay. Geez, you know, like, I've been thanking God for St. Patrick for a long time now. Since I, you know, since I started playing the fiddle again, we moved to Toronto in 2003 and we were dirt poor. We moved here with our last two grand and then I was playing the fiddle again after a long time. And I remember the St. Patty's week came along. It was the first St. Patty's week that I had in Toronto. And it was on a Thursday, which meant, like, when you're in the game, when it's on a Thursday, it's really good. Because people often do things the, the weekend before and the weekend after. It's really good. And I remember that week, I made, like, 1500 bucks in the week. And I was so happy. I couldn't believe it. I was like, thank God for St. Patrick. And uh, it's been like that ever since. The numbers have gone up, of course. And I started producing shows for St. Patrick's Day. But now I'm thanking God for St. Patrick's Day because I got called for jury duty. And it, the date on it is March 14th. And so I called the missus today and I said, I play Irish traditional music. This is the worst possible time. I'll do it another time. And she said, no problem. I understand. And so it's put off until November. <laughs> So thank God for St. Patrick driving the snakes out of Ireland and getting me out of jury duty. Gotta love it. Hey, Dan. Yeah. I've done a, Dan. Yes. I've done a similar thing to guys I work with on a critical project. As long as you tell them to postpone it, they're fine. You never tell them not to do it. I started with that, Earl. I started with yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. Totally. Anyway, what do you need, buddy? Um, you know where my sketch pad is? <laughs> no. I did see it, but I'm not sure where. You're going to have to look around. Mm -hmm. Also, is there enough salmon for me to have a little more? I wouldn't if I were you, because your mom and your sister are going to come, and yep. if you eat it, they're going to kill you. And true. between the two of them, they have the power. Yeah, true. Okay. Stella. Okay. Oh, this is a great set. Yeah. And just to remind you, with Elizabeth's big coat, I know, doesn't jump to the ear right away. It's Highland Pipe music, and that stuff never does. So let me just remind you how it goes there. music in your head <laughs> all right well if there's no further ado let's just get to it nice and easy not too fast Stella's trip to Kamloops the Iron Man Elizabeth's big coat flowers of Edinburgh when in doubt, resort to printer paper. absolutely so I think we were doing it kind of we'll go a little slower since it's been a while so we'll go kind of like Somewhere 
somewhere around there. Okay, let's give it a try and see what happens. One, two, three.
great. And I know you guys know that one really well, so I, I brought up the tempo a bit and I messed around a little bit. I don't know if anybody noticed. And it's really easy. <laughs> it's really easy to mess around in that tune. Basically, when I'm messing around in that tune, I basically complete all the scales that you start. You know what I mean? Complete all the arpeggios that you start right to the bottom there. And that's how I that's how I expanded it on the on it there. And you guys can do it too if you feel like it. You know, that's basically the the model that I do that with. Anybody having any trouble with any of this set? Anything at all? No? Okay, great. Do you want to try a little bit faster? Just a bit. Now, I'd say the march was probably good where it is. The Iron Man could come up a little bit. Does anybody think they'd have trouble playing the Iron Man a little bit faster? No? I think it'd be good. And then the uh, the two reels, uh, you know, the uh, Elizabeth Big Coat, we could probably do slightly faster. And then I don't think we'll be going faster than what we just did for the Flowers of Edinburgh. Okay, it's just the other tunes we want to get up just slightly. Let's do it one more time. Uh, shake my hand out here. And we'll do it. Okay. So let's see. So for the march. Okay. Yeah, everybody's feeling that. Here we go. Oh, somebody chatted with me. I have to check and see what they said. Oh, Elizabeth had to go. Elizabeth had to go, everybody. <laughs> okay, here we go. One, two, three.
right fun. I hope it wasn't too, too fast for anybody. How did everybody feel about all that? Okay, and if you feel like you were barely hanging on, that's okay. That's okay. We all barely hang on at some point or another, you know? That's how you stay on the wagon. <laughs> Is everybody feeling okay about Stella? We've refreshed it. That's great. Now let's give ourselves a break and do something slow. Do, should we try Lonesome Eyes or should we try Miss Rowan Davies? Which one? Who wants to do Lonesome Eyes? Yep. Yeah. Who wants to do Rowan Davies? Half and half. Okay, we'll start with Lonesome Eyes, then we'll do Rowan Davies, okay? Lonesome Eyes is pretty easy. It's not that hard. We'll do it a few times, and then we'll go on. All right. double stopping notes there people I remember we talked we talked about that before notes that alternate notes on the long ones that people can play if they feel like it to fill it out or to play as double stops totally up to you but don't forget about it because that's I remember that was going so nice there before when we were all in the same room if you can imagine okay here we go. We're going to do it. Let's do it three times for the practice, people. Three times. The third time, pour on the feeling. One, two, three, one, two.
more time, more bow. That's a beautiful piece of music. God love Jerry. All right, how's everybody feeling? Any problems with that one? No problems, eh? It's pretty simple, really. And you getting some good double stops happening or interesting things like that? <laughs> That's good. Heather, I saw you switch to piano. That's very nice. Nice tune to nice tune to back on the piano. That's for sure. That's great. Okie dokie. So now, any any other... Should we do that again? I think we got that, eh? No problems with that one. Just wanted to refresh. Now let's go to Miss Rowan Davies. Switching gears a little bit. Key of uh, G. And drink some bubbly. Okay. Miss Rowan Davies. This one's a bit more complicated. like my fiddle's going out of tune and it's getting sharp see that's the, i don't know what's going on in this little house we're out of here soon enough yeah my a string got a little sharp there so did my e string and i could tell during lonesome eyes i could tell because when i went to do this one here It just the, the A was bothering my ear. It was starting to like bother it, and that's that's the way that I can tell sharp is when it starts to, uh, you know, drives me crazy. Anyway, okay, everybody ready with Miss Rowan Davies? Let's do it. We'll just practice the air right now. Here we go. One, two, three, one, two.
Bhutan. tune oh my god how's everybody feeling it's not hard eh it's not that hard just beautiful that's all <laughs> good to think of a few things to dress it up we talked about the double stop ideas that's the best thing to do at this point to dress it up a few double a uh, few grace notes might not go astray either but that's about it for that one any questions or problems about uh, Rowan Davies anything at all okay great so now let's see should we work on our jigs or our brand new tunes that we just learned who wants to work on the jigs okay the brand new tunes it is then <laughs> so that's going to be then uh, we're doing uh Earthy castle and willa fjord and let's just take her nice and slow we'll go through those two tunes i'm still looking for another uh island tune uh to finish off the set there. But I'll keep looking. I didn't have a lot of time this week to be at the computer. Now let me just get the versions up so I don't confuse anyone. Earthy Castle. It's great. And Willa Fjord. Yeah, great. Got them both up right away. Okay, so we're going to do, we'll start with Erethi. We'll play Erethi a good couple times, and then we'll work on Willa Fjord. And then we'll be done our practice night. It's good to have a practice night. This is great. I hope everybody's arms are not falling off. Okay. So, let's see. Let's take her about that fast. I kind of have a feeling everybody's going to be okay with that speed. So let's give it a hook and see what happens here. Some of you I can't see because of my music, but if you're having any problems, just yell, unmute yourself and yell. Okay, here we go. Not too fast. Earthy Castle. A one, two, three.
How's everybody feeling? It's good. Okay. We'll try one more time, just a little bit faster, because everybody looked like they were getting along just fine there. I think we could kind of uh, stand a little faster, and it's not going to be much faster. It would be maximum like this. Let's try it. Let's see what happens, okay? What's the worst that can happen, right? Scottish people get mad at you. No big deal. They're always mad. A one, two, three. Okay, a little quick look at uh, Willow Fjord. And that is the top speed for Earthy Castle, guys. So if you had trouble at that speed, don't you don't need to go any faster than that. So, of course, back to the slow. Work out whatever the problems are, and then that's going to be your top speed, okay? So don't worry about trying to go any faster than that. All right, Willow Fjord. Now I'm trying to think of a comfy tempo for this one to start off with. We only learned it like last week or something. <laughs> start exercising I just can't do that who would ever do that no musicians I know anyway I know that here we go a one two three
on. That looked great, guys. And that was a pretty decent clip as well. Like, starting to get up there. My arm was going. So that's very, very good. Anybody having any problems with Wheel Willow Fjord? Well, that's terrific. Good. Okay. So we didn't get to the jig set, but we did get to everything else, which I'm very impressed with. Yes, Anne-Marie? I just noticed there's a couple of notes we agreed to change. Okay. So, yeah. Let's see. One, two, one, two, three. Third bar, you know, not to pick up. We changed that to make it easier, D, F, and A, because people are used to playing that. Yep, that's fine. Totally fine. Yeah. And then in the B part, in the third bar, it's an A instead of a G. Okay, we went with that, did we? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. Got, not my music, but anyway, just yep. thought I mentioned it. Yeah, okay, and I'll try to remember that too. People can remind me next time we do it, those couple of notes, but that's a good good point. Uh, the version that I found on the internet, like... Uh, it, I played it the way we changed it. That's the way I played it all growing up. Like, I didn't remember it this other way. But it does look pretty official, you know. It says, Joe Buchan and Scottish Tome. I mean, you don't use the word tome if you're really serious, if you're not really serious about things, you know what I mean? Uh, but I, I don't think anybody, I mean, what's his name there? Joe Buchan is probably gone, so he won't mind if we change it a little bit. Good point, though, Emery. That's what we do. I couldn't hear what Anne-Marie was saying, which mm. notes were being changed. Okay, so uh, there's going to be, uh, uh, so, which one is in the first part there, Anne-Marie? Uh, or in the first part? Bar, bar three ends up the same as bar one. Yes, what? bar three is going to be the same as bar one. That's right, yeah. Changing the uh, changing the E to the F and the G to the A. Right. So you're gonna arpeggiate, arpeggiate. And then the other thing is, and I agree totally, is uh, in the I think it's the third bar of the second part, changing that G to an A. Am I right? That's right. Okay. And that's it. Just those three notes, yeah. but. Dan. Yes. <laughs> And tones are for academics, not fiddlers. <laughs> That's for sure there, Peter. That's for sure. I don't know how that word ended up in our in our vernacular. But anyway. Okay, good points about those three notes. I heard it was late at night when he wrote it, so he was tired. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Tired author. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. Talking to Patrick Arcel, he talks a lot about Patty O'Brien, who is a great writer of tunes my god i just love patty o'brien tunes and one thing he said was that when patty was going down to the final kind of draft that he that he sends into the publisher it was the most stressful time for him because no more changes are allowed after that point he has to decide the the ending is going to be like this the middle phrase is going to be like this, and that's it. I can't change it anymore. And he said that that was the most stressful part for him. And I can understand because the possibilities are endless. And what do you decide is going to be your final say on these things? You know, it can't. It must be a very stressful thing. But anyway, people go and change it anyway, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, there's a whole bunch of fiddlers out there, so that's not right. That's right. Oh, totally. Absolutely. Anyway, okay, guys, really good practice. Thanks for putting up with all the bow iron work. I think it was great for everybody. And we'll see you next week, and I'll be in touch. I've been talking to the church. I'll keep going. I'll be in touch with our plan. Thank you, Dan. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yes, hope to see a few of you there. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. 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 B